recording started. Okay. Welcome back to Issues and Interviews with Michael Lawler on the Hudson Power Broker YouTube channel. I have a great guest. Very excited to have this guest, United States Congressional Candidate Maureen McArdle Shulman. Good morning, Maureen. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm wonderful. Well, it's great to have you. I've been following your campaign, as I mentioned off the air a few moments ago. But uh, tell everybody about yourself, your biography, your family, and all that. Okay. Um, my name is Maureen McArdle Shulman. I'm 61 years old. I'm a retired New York City firefighter. I was part of the first class of women in 1982. I was assigned to Engine 35 in East Harlem and did almost my entire career there, except for a short stint teaching at the academy after 9-11. And I loved it. Who knew? <laughs> how, did, how did that come to be? What made you, as a, a young woman, decide to be a trailblazing uh, firefighter in New York City? Um, not was not in my plan. I can't say I always wanted to be a firefighter, but my dad was a firefighter and he, I wanted to be a police officer. I have an associate's in criminal justice and a bachelor's in public justice with a minor in psychology. And I wanted to be a police officer. And he said, take every civil service test that comes up. And I did. And it right. worked out good because at the time I was married with a baby with no medical insurance, no dental insurance. And I needed a job and I took the first job that came up and that happened to be the one. Wow. That's great. And, and how many women were in that first class? 38. Oh, okay. okay. Out of 10,000 men. Wow. On the, on the fire department. Wow. So the first 38 all came in together and all went to the academy? Yes. yes. Oh, um, there was another four that came in the class after mine. That's incredible. That's incredible. And that was what? 82? 1982, September 25th, I got sworn in. Okay, all right. And you went right through past 9-11. Yes. Um, well, you have to remember, that was the second attack on the World Trade Center. I was there for the first one in 93. Um, very scary. I always felt safe working in Harlem because um, I didn't think it was a place that would be attacked, not thinking that eventually I would end up at the World Trade Center on both occasions. Oh, you were you were at World Trade Center in ninety three and in yes, 93 and two thousand one. Yes. Tell me about that. Those. Um, I really thought the world was coming to an end. I'll be honest with you. Um, the first plane hit on my way to. I was detailed out to another company on my way there. The second plane hit. It was one of the most clear, beautiful days that I've ever seen in my life. And there's no way that was a mistake. I remember. I. I it was just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous day, and it turned bad really quickly. Um, I started to go into Tower 2, sub-basement 6, when the people started coming off the roof of the building. In fact, wow. one land did not fall from me. Wow. And that stopped us from going in. I just called my husband. He was a police lieutenant at the time working, and I just called and left a message on his um, telephone at work saying where I was going just in case I didn't come out. That's amazing. God bless. And one of one of the things that happened was I pulled when we pulled in to the area, I saw my brother, my older brother Kevin's rig, and I knew if he was there, he was gone, and that was scary. And I have another brother who's on the job, and that was my parents could have lost half their kids in one shot, but thank goodness we all made it through. Oh my gosh, that's a miracle. I'm glad you. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Amazing. It was, it was frightening. So Maureen McArdle Showman, you have uh, this great career. You're a trailblazer, very eventful uh, career in, in the fire department. You have children. I know you have grandchildren now. So yes, thank you. you could be enjoying the good life. Your husband retired also? Yes, he's a retired police lieutenant. Okay, so yeah. you could be sitting on sitting back enjoying things. Instead, you threw your hat into the political arena in one of the craziest political years ever. Why? Why are you running for the United States Congress in the 17th Congressional District? I, I couldn't sit back anymore and just stay home and complain about what was going on in our government. No one was stepping up. And I, I just can't let the socialists, the Marxists take over our government. In this country, we love the country. My dad and his nine siblings fought in World War II for. My wow. great grandfather's in World War I. And we just letting it fall apart. And they worked so hard to, to maintain it and sacrifice so much the previous generations for us. And I just couldn't sit back anymore and complain. I had to step up and do something. 
Good for you. Good for you. That's amazing. Where was your dad in World War II? He was in the Navy. Oh, wow. And the day he signed, he had to have his parents sign for him because he was only 17. Oh, and the day that he left was the day he found out his older brother was killed in Normandy. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, so I can't imagine the heart wrenching of that where you found out you lost one of your sons. He was one of 10 kids. You lost one of your sons in, in the invasion of Normandy and your youngest son is is leaving the same day for the same war. I, I, I can't imagine That's how difficult that was for my grandparents. You're, you're, you're a great American family. Uh, World War II, New York City police, fire. Well, FDA. let me let me tell you something. I always said to my dad, why? Why did you go? You didn't have to go so young. And he grew up very poor. He said, they promised me three meals a day. I never had that growing up. Wow. And he said, I went for the food. <laughs> Where did you grow up, Maury? Um, In Wilson Park on Long Island. Oh, okay. Very nice. Very nice. And tell us about your congressional district. I should have mentioned, uh, asked about this, but the, the 17th congressional district, geographically, where are we talking? It's all of Rockland County, a wee bit of Scarsdale, White Plains, <clears throat> up to York, excuse me, <clears throat> up to Yorktown, but not all of Yorktown. It's really been gerrymandered like crazy. Right. So I don't even have all of Rockland. I have Dobbs Ferry. I have Croton on the Hudson. It, it really is all over the place. So, so how is that going? What is it like campaigning now as a first? Your first time candidate, correct? Absolutely. And your um, campaign. I have a lot of miles on my car. I pay <laughs> that toll all the time. Sometimes five days a week, going back and forth to Rockland. It's a very you know, everyone uses this, but it's a real grassroots campaign. I don't have any backing except for friends and family and people like who do a show like this. And then maybe I'll get something through PayPal. But it's um, it's all boots on the ground. It's actually, you know, I'm going to outdoor concerts. I'm introducing myself to people. I was at a farmer's market in Peekskill. I went to a car show on Sunday. I'm all over the place. That's great. And that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going up and it's hard in a in a COVID-19 situation right. to wear a mask and and sunglasses because it's bright out and try to introduce yourself to people. <laughs> yeah. But it sounds like you're making it work. It sounds like you're making it happen there. I'm trying. I really am. That's all I can do. I'm not giving up. I'm a, listen, all you got to do is tell me it's not a winnable race. And I'm on it like crazy. Good for you. Good for you. And you won a primary. You won with about three quarters of the vote, 77 percent of the vote in the primary about a month ago. And you're running against a young man named Mondale Jones, very liberal uh, graduate. Tell us about the difference between you and your opponent, Mr. Jones. Absolute polar opposites. I believe in law and order. I believe we should not defund the police. We should we should defend the police. I don't believe in Medicare for all. I believe all those social programs that he and AOC and the squad want to bring to the country are going to absolutely destroy the middle class of this country. I'm sure he's backing Biden's housing program where they're going to dilute the suburbs and get rid of them, make them all part of the city. They want to take our funding away for our schools. People buy houses because of good school districts. They want to take our tax dollars for our schools and give it to other towns that their schools aren't as good as ours. Our houses aren't going to be worth anything. This is the American dream, to buy a house, have a backyard. Listen, it was nothing more important during COVID-19 than having a backyard to go out right. to, to get away. Because we right. were all stuck at home. Very little we could we go out, go grocery shopping, and that was it. And doctor's appointments, which even those were Zoom. So people needed a place to go and get away from other members of our family. <laughs> you it's said that. True. <laughs> yeah, you do. You need a little space. You're right. You're yes, right. Yes, everybody needs true. space. And there and is. I, a... I listen. I I worked in the projects in East Harlem. That was my response area, the Wagner houses. And I, my heart broke for those people because they could have three generations living in a two bedroom apartment, and nobody's going to school, nobody's going to work, and they were all stuck there. And it's, it's a terrible, terrible situation. It really is. And I, my heart broke for them that they had nowhere to go. They're afraid probably to get on the elevators, afraid to use the stairs. It was horrible. I, I feel bad for them. You're right. And liberals have been pushing, you know, the urbanization of every community and high density housing. And um, that that turned out to be a big part of the problem with COVID. Uh, people living in apartments, people living in close quarters. 
much less so with public, to... public public transportation. They're going on subways. The subways weren't getting cleaned. They were going on subways. They were going on buses, touching everything everyone else was touching. It it, it spread like crazy. Now, uh, Maureen McConnell Shulman, you're running for the congressional seat in the 17th congressional district seat that uh, Neil Lowy is retiring from. You're a Republican. Uh, you're in Westchester. How do you feel about running with President Trump on the uh, on the ticket? I like what President Trump has done with the economy. Before COVID, we, we were all doing fantastic. Everybody had jobs. Every social economic group was rising up. It was wonderful. Um, do I like everything President Trump personally says? No, but I do like all his political stance on things. I mean, as far as the masks go, he said, Fashi said, we don't need masks. And then all of a sudden we need masks. And, right. you know, it, I'm not too happy with Fauci, I'll tell you right now, but I think President Trump was following what, what he was recommended to him. Yeah, good point. Fauci's not much of a pitcher either. I know he's almost 80 years old, but he yeah, well, I don't know. pitch there. I don't really, I think all sports is a bunch of overpaid babies, and I'll probably lose some votes for saying that, but I think it's true. You might get some votes saying that. Are you following the Yankees and all the, uh, the protests at the baseball games and things? No, I saw a little thing where they put a, a insignia on their uniform that yeah. I wasn't too happy with, let's put it that way. What are the other big issues in the 17th Congressional District, Maureen? Oh, big issues. The, um, the salt, the salt tax having the limit on the salt. Right, the deduction. Um, one of the issues I have is Governor Como so proud of himself that he announced he's happy with the highest paid taxes in Westchester and Rockland County. And that's not something you should be proud of. That means you're wasting our money. I mean, we had all those stupid Taste of New York signs all over the place that ended up being going to the federal, and it was a big waste of money. And and we got it. We got to ring him in. That's ridiculous. What's going on right now? And yeah. he he's proud of himself, and he's part of the problem with with why we have such high taxes. But we have to do something. We can't we can't survive and not get our deductions on our federal income tax with the taxes we pay. Yeah, good I point. That's, that's a huge problem. In your district, uh, everywhere in New York, but particularly in the New York metropolitan suburbs, property taxes are so high. If you don't get the deduction, it definitely hurts. And we can get well, some relief. We don't get. It's not that we don't get the deduction. We get ten thousand dollars for the deduction. Right. So it's limited to ten. Yes, and people are paying. I just spoke to a couple yesterday. They're paying twenty-two thousand dollars a year in property taxes. Wow! I mean, they have a beautiful house. Don't get me wrong; it's very nice, yeah. but it's that's a lot of money. And Every, they'll be they'll probably be leaving soon because they're both retired and can't afford to stay here because of that. Right. That is the biggest problem of all. We have an exodus of productive people, people who make good incomes, people who are good for communities, and a hundred thousand of them are leaving every year. That Governor Cuomo has been. Uh, been governor. You're so true. So, Maureen, as we wrap up here, where can people learn more about the campaign? Maybe contribute to you. Go campaign? to my website, www.maureen number four congress. Um, you can you can email me, um, Maureen for Congress number four at aol.com. And that's about it. And just um, Google me. I have a YouTube channel too now. Oh, nice, nice. All right, very cool. Maureen number four. And I'll be. Maureen number four Congress. All right. Dot com. Correct? Excuse me? It's dot com at the end. Yes, dot com. Yes, yes. And All I'll right. be at the rally, uh back the blue rally this Sunday. I'll be there okay. if anybody wants to come and support. Where is that? Which one's that? It's Which rally? Stone, Stony Point. Oh, Stony Point. Okay. I think I think I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm okay. Sorry. We got some time. Be. We have some time to figure it out. Good for you, Maureen. I love your story. I love our, uh, our country and our community. Uh, I look forward to touching you touch deal over the next 100 days. I guess it's, it's 99. 99. 99 days now. All right. All the best to you, Maureen Thank McCarthy. You. Check her out, Maureen, the number four congress.com or Google Maureen McCarthy and uh, learn more about her. Throw a few dollars her way and help her get a message out. Thanks so much, Maureen. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Take care.